Here is an example of how the shape of the girder reflects the shear and bending moment diagram. Okay, so if you study this here, you can see that this girder here kind of has a shape like this. Okay, so it's tapered. Okay, so it starts off, you know, maybe um, maybe 10 inches deep over here, and then by the time it gets over here to the to the middle, you know, it may be more like you know, 18 inches or so deep. Okay, so this is what is known as a, a tapered wide flange beam. And so, why did the engineer um, go through the extra effort to, to um, manufacture or to call out a tapered wide flange beam? Well, it's because uh, they determined in this particular case it was far more cost effective to spend a little bit more on labor to have this thing um, tapered than it would be just to have. Um, a prismatic wide flange beam, which means it's the same beam all the way across. Okay. Okay, so this could be what the beam actually looks like. Okay, so it's a nice uniform distribution all the way across. Maybe this is the um, wind pressure pushing down on it, or maybe this is um, water that has accumulated in, in the ceiling, or it could be just the um, dead weight of the, um, the roof system itself. But anyway, if we just assume a system that looks like this, a uniformly distributed load, which is what one would probably do in a situation like this here, the shear diagram would look something like this. Okay. Right? You'd have a support reaction here, AY, so that would be your offset. Um, we are integrating a constant, so there's your line, and your BY would push us back up. So it would have a shape kind of like this. And then our moment diagram, well, we have a pin over here at A, so there's no moment. Okay, remember the moment is the area underneath the shear diagram. Okay, so it would look something like that. Okay, because we're integrating the shear, right? We're integrating the line, so that gives us a parabola, and we know that the maximum uh, moment is where the shear happens to be zero. Okay, so an optimum design here is that the engineer said, well, um, the moment, as in with most structures, is usually f more critical than shear. Usually, shear is not a, a major issue in our design, but the moment um, is a very big issue. So we need a, a heavier beam or deeper beam here where the moment is very, very large. But over here where we have no moment, we don't need quite as, as hefty of a beam. Okay. Now they could have made this into some sort of um, a parabolic shape if you really wanted to be um, optimized. But that probably would have been very, very cost prohibitive um, in order to have, you know, um, the fabricator make it. Um, even this tapered beam here probably was a fairly um, expensive um, um, design, okay? But apparently it was more cost effective to, um, to do this because of the um, saving in materials. Or, of course, maybe the architect wanted some sort of visual effect um, from inside um, this room down here. Although more than likely there's probably a false ceiling hanging down from this and the beam is, is completely covered up. Okay, But anyway, this is a, a very good example of how the shape of our design is reflected on our shear and bending moment diagram and primarily the moment diagram.